Praise the Lord, everyone. We thank the Lord this morning for his loving kindness and his tender mercies unto us. We have a mindset to praise him this morning, to magnify him, because he has allowed us to be in the land of the living one more time. He did not allow our bed this morning to become our grave. So as a result of that, we can wave our hands and lift up that glorious name of Jesus Christ. He is the one that sustains us, keeps us together. With so many across, not only the United States, but across the world, they are facing anxiety, they are facing trepidation, they are overwhelmed. But something about a relationship with the Lord that holds us together when so many are falling apart, not knowing what to do, not knowing which way to turn. But we have a God this morning that has declared that I will never leave you. I won't forsake you. Oh, hallelujah. And if God has said that to us this morning, then we must have the mindset to say that to God as well. Lord, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. When the going gets rough, when I, I don't know what to do, when my back is against the wall, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, Lord, you are my hiding place. You are the upper lifter of my head. In our times of difficulty, we want you to know that even though we are benefited by all the wonderful things that you do consistently, our peace, our joy, the material things of life, but when the adversities come, Lord, we embrace your truth. We hold on to your word that gives us foundation that gives us hope that our faith is not detoured, but our confidence and our trust, oh God, is in you. We are not just a people, Lord God, that can serve you in the church house. We are not those that can serve you because all around us is the saints of God. But when we are alone, we know how to praise you. We know how to honor you. We know how to give you praise. And so, so Lord, since you have encouraged us, since you have kept our heads above the turbulent waters of life, we come this morning to praise and magnify your gracious name. To those of you this morning that cannot be in service because of some pre-existing illnesses, our hands are going up for you too. We're singing that song for you too. Those of you that are looking for salvation, looking for an alternative lifestyle, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is concerned about you. Those that somehow or another, the enemy has deceived and they are backslidden, God loves you. And God wants you to come back home. Those are in apostate. I want you to know that God is yet speaking to your heart. God is whispering in your ear in the night hour, beseeching you, imploring you, pulling on the cords of your heart to come to your senses and come back to Him. Be encouraged this morning. His arms are stretched wide open and says come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden and he says I will give you rest this pandemic all over the world has touched the hearts in so many ways but I want you to know that God is still on the throne still rules in heaven in the kingdom of men 
and God is concerned about you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning we're going to sing a congregational song. And even on this Facebook and YouTube, wherever you are, join in with us. The Bible says this is a day the Lord has made. He said, let us rejoice and be glad in it. My, 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 my. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, have me. The Lord, have
rejoice, for he has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. In it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. Come on. He woke you up this morning. We need to give him some praise. Come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Hey, listen, I come to clap my hands. I come to clap my hands. I come to clap my head. I come to clap my head. I don't know what you come to do. Hey, I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise the Lord. 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 I come to lift him up. Help me lift him up. Help me lift him up. Help me lift him up Higher 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 I come to clap my head I 
while you're while you're standing while you're standing this morning perhaps there is a prayer request perhaps there is something that you desire for the Lord to do in your behalf prayer in itself it means to entreat the Lord it means to petition his throne it means to let our request be known and I'm sure this morning that you have family members spouses sons and daughters that need the help in the hand of the Lord and I cannot think of anyone else that can do what we cannot do but the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ we're not only praying for our loved ones we're praying for our community our city praying for our country and praying around for those around the world and so many lives have been touched Many lives have been taken by this pandemic. But because God still has you alive, breath and the blood yet running warm in your veins, I want you this morning just to think about those that are unfortunate that have succumbed to this virus. Loved ones that have been lost those in our hospitals, our children in the schoolroom. Think about those. And petitioning the Lord Jesus Christ somehow or another to wrap his arms around those and comfort them that are bereaved. And those that are sick, that somehow or another that they will understand that God is a God that healeth thee. Those that are troubled in heart and in mind, that the Lord would just stretch out his divine hands and let this old world know that he still rules and that he still concerned about all of us so this morning we come before the throne of grace to petition him to ask him for his help and for his guidance go ahead go right ahead just sing a little of this song Just telling, just telling, just telling. Coming from the depths of your heart, just telling. My, 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 my. Oh, oh, oh. Tell you the beauty of you, of you, of you. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, help us say, I love you, Jesus. Come on, say it. God, we worship him. We just want to tell you again. Lord, I love Come on, say it with a loud voice in here. Come on, say it. I love you. God, we lift our heads in total adoration. We want to tell you, Lord, we love you again. Come on, say. All over the house, if we lift our heads together, come on, say. I love you, G. Come on, say it. God, we worship him. 
we realize that Lord we worship come on let's do it one more time corporate say I love I love you Jesus I love you Jesus come on say it. I love you Jesus we lift our hands and say I need you I need you Jesus come on say I need you Jesus if there ever was a time that we needed you we sure enough need you right now Lord I want you Jesus I love you, Jesus. Oh, say I love you. Oh, I love. Come on, say I love you, Jesus. God, we lift our hands. God, we praise you because we love you. Come on, saints. Hey, I love you. Oh, 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 Lord. Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, open up your mouth and say that. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Somebody just clap your hands and begin to praise God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You ought to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Evangelist. Evangelist Arnett, you come. I guess just stand right there. Lead us in prayer. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, 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 yeah. oh, oh. Florida, come back and plug that microphone back up. Mm -hmm. I love you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm 
na na. At this time, we're going to ask that Deacon Johnson will come. Deacon Johnson will come and give us a scripture reading. Let's receive him by saying amen. Thank you, Evangelist, for the prayer of invocation this morning. Deacon. Praise the Lord. Praise the, the Lord. Scripture reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53 and 58. It reads as thus. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 53 and verse 58. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. I want us to be reminded that even though our governor has declared that this is a fifth phase, I want us to be vigilant here at Bethany Apostolic Church to continue to follow social distancing. Let us be concerned about our brothers and sisters, and yes, let us be concerned about one another those that come to our fellowship, that they feel safe, and that we have the dignity and honor in terms of praising and magnifying the God of our salvation. I want us to know this morning that we have come for another purpose than to lift up that glorious name of Jesus Christ, to come to allow him to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. I think that everyone, regardless as to what relationship that you have with Jesus Christ, there is a place in our heart that desires worship. And this is what the Lord wants us to do. And so when we come, I want you to recognize and to know that even though we are following the protocol of social distancing, we still have a mindset to praise and magnify the God of our salvation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And this is what we're here for. We're not here to look at one another, but we're here to give our God some glory. Can we say hallelujah one more time? I'm going to do something a little different this morning, and that is I want Sister Powers to come, and Sister uh, Dr. Morgan, I want to use you this morning, and Sister Frazier to come too, and we want about three songs this morning. And let, let, us, let, us, let us begin to praise God like it's our last time. I made a statement on last week, and I, I hope that you captured that. Even though we're wearing these masks and we're doing all we can do to protect ourselves and others, it means ultimately that your God is the one that is taking care of you. Am I talking loud enough? And we must be cognizant enough that we're not foolish. Am I talking loud enough? That we're not foolish and we're not tempt the Lord. But I want you to know that God is the one that is protecting you. Just praise you. Now you, uh, Powers, you're the one you've been using there. Now, now, Elder, 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 if you will, just a moment now. Give this one right here to Sister Powers since you have that one. Leave it, leave it alone. Give this to Sister Powers since you have that one. Sister Powers, take this one. Now, let's plug this one in right here. Hallelujah. 
Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, say every word. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, say every praise. Praise to every pray, every pray, every pray is to our God. Oh, every pray, every pray is to our God. Every word, every word of worship with one accord. Every pray, every pray, every pray. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give him glory. Come on, church. When you begin to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. We thank God for saving us. Hallelujah. First lady, will you help us with this one? Welcome into this place. Hallelujah. Come on, say welcome. Come on, help us. You desire. You desire to abide in the presence. In the presence of your people. So we live. So we lift our hands. As we lift our voice. As we lift our voice. Our voice. Oh, 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 oh. As we this praise unto you. Everybody say, oh, welcome, welcome into this place, into this place. Oh, say welcome, welcome oh, into this place. Come on, say it. So we live, so we live our head as we live our voice as we offer this praise unto your name. Come on, say it again. Oh, say welcome. Say welcome, welcome, and to, to this broken bed. Come on, say you desire, you desire to abide, to abide in the presence, in the presence of your people. So we lift, so we lift our hands hand as we lift. Say this with me. Hallelujah. Come on, say it. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say it with us. Hallelujah. Come on, we give them glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Of all the glory. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Oh, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love. Say, Lord, I love. Lord, I love. We give you glory. Lord, I love. Lord, I love you. All the glory. Say, all the glory and all the honor. Say. All oh, the honor belongs, belongs to you, the same, you, the Savior. Say all the glory, all the glory, and all the honor. the 
the Savior. You're the Savior. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. The angels cry holy. Hallelujah. Holy, holy you are Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. 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 Oh, we forever cry. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. Somebody give them glory. On, somebody just give them glory yeah. come on give them glory yeah. come on just begin to tell them thank you we worship you Jesus we give you glory oh we give you glory oh Josh, what's that song we sing? Was it worth? I think that's an appropriate song at this particular time. And we certainly thank the Lord for those that stand in with the praise team. But that song, Worth, it, it, it certainly has the sentiment of, of our heart. That song, that song. My, 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 my. And I would... I would ask this morning to allow the words of that song Hallelujah. just simply to resonate within you. Within. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping Come on, help me say that so you cleaned me up inside you thought i was to die for ah, yes, yes. so you sacrificed your life so i could be free so i could be whole So you came. came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you clean, clean me up inside. So you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. You sacrificed your life. So I could be. So I can tell, I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. Come on, say so you came, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life 
so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. Say glory, glory to the God who changed. I will worship you. I will give you glory. I will give you honor. Cause you deserve my worship. Cause you deserve my praise. Oh, forever. Oh, forever. Oh, forever. Say forever. Say forever. Forever. I will give you glory. was worth saving somebody bless him come on say hey forever come on say forever 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 I worship forever I pray forever Say forever, forever, say forever, forever, say forever, forever, I will give you glory, I will give you honor, so, so I could be free. So I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. Mm -hmm. If that song is touch your heart just give the Lord a hand wave look across the aisle and tell somebody forever forever my 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 forever there's one thing about praise it takes you from where you are to that place in God that you forget about everything else. My, 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 my. And now you come to the place in your life in that moment to say, God, I'm relying, I'm leaning, I'm depending upon you. And those of you that begin to worship God in such capacity. You step out of worship and you step into praise. 
and somehow or another you forget about everything else for that time and I believe that perhaps you have put all of those things in the qualified capable hands of our God then you can truly say forever 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 thank you Lord thank you Lord that's the kind of praiser that's the kind of worshiper that God is looking for you can't change the circumstance you can't change the condition but God can God can too big for you give it to God give it to God my 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 put your hand together to celebrate here my 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 to those of you that are watching this on Facebook or YouTube I want you to know that this is coming from Bethany Apostolic Church in the heart of the city of Evansville, Indiana. Our website is BethanyApostolic212.org. We would love to hear from you. If there is a need that God can supply, we'd love to hear from you. Wanting you to know that you are not alone. And our God cares about you. Time where the world is afraid. Many of the saints are afraid as well. Our God is in control. This has not caught him by surprise. And he has the resources to assist us, to help us, to bring us through these crises. But it's going to take our dependency upon him. It's going to take us to have a continuation of prayer. Personal worship in our homes and doing those things that we cannot do here at the assembly. That means ongoing evangelism, ongoing discipleship. Ongoing asking the Lord for guidance and direction. That means pouring out our spirit to him. He has the capacity, he has the capability of guiding us through these uncharted wars. Even our government alone, they do not know at this time what to do. Everyone is searching, trying to find out when will this thing end, when will it be over. We know if you have an unfractured relationship with Jesus Christ, we know that this is all in the hand of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he's able to sustain you. That does not indicate that we tempt the Lord. That does not indicate that we do not look at this thing intellectually and cognitively but it certainly means that God ultimately in our faith that he's able to sustain us and bring us through when it's over will you have the testimony that I was still able to praise you still able to honor you When it's over, will you tell the Lord, I still stand firm on your foundation. Have the confidence, the assurance in you. Didn't waver. Something that the assistant bishop of the Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Church has said many years ago, I take the opportunity to say it this morning. So many of the people of God we just go through the storm. We just go through the test. 
But he said something that was so profound. He said, let us grow through. Let us grow through. Let us find something about ourselves, our deficiency, and our dependency upon God. That is the time to tell God, Lord, I'm empty. I don't know what to do, but Lord, I know that I'm in your hands. And your hands are more qualified. They're more capable to manage the affairs of my life than I. Let the Lord know how much you appreciate him, how much you love him, how much you adore him. My God, my God. Many times you can't be in the sanctuary doing those things that you normally do. I say on Monday night, let your home be a place of sanctuary where you can fall on your knees and cry out to God. Sing praises to him. Tell you, I sing, I don't sing very well, but I'm singing. Hallelujah. Let your praise go into worship. Let those tears come down your eyes and say, God, in all of this, you're the one that holds me secure. You let me know, Lord God, that somehow you and I, we're going to make it through this. Hallelujah. And I know I may sound like I'm crazy this morning. But I got some crazy faith for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tell him that you remember when he brought you through the storms in your yesterday. You remember that he didn't allow you to fall. You remember that you threw all of your hopes upon him that he brought you through. My God, my God, my God. In this pandemic. Lord wants to do some new things for you. In this pandemic, he wants to take you even through all of this to a higher level. A higher level of praise, a higher level of worship. And all he wants is just somebody, a heart, that will say, Lord, I'm ready to go this journey with you. I'm ready to go into a new adventure, a new plateau. I believe this morning that some folks are tired of where they are and they're ready to have some new experience with God. Look across the aisle and give somebody one of these if you will. Tell somebody we love you and you're not alone. Now put your hands together and give God some praise. At this time it would normally be offering time. I just want you to know that we are giving online, online, that is Bethany Apostolic 212.org. They have provisions there for you to give. The Bible said it's more blessed to give than receive. And also those of you who would like to give, they will have containers for you at the time of benediction. Now, what I want you to do with this time, I want you to stay in it. Those that were giving online, and I want to say this too. Those of you on Facebook this, this morning, if you want to give online, you can do the same thing too. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Bow your head for you. Father, we thank you for just another opportunity that you've given us. Father, we thank you because you have never left us nor forsaken us. In our times of pain, in our times of difficulty, in our times of struggle. You, oh God, you have always been there. You've been a father, you've been a friend, you've been a brother. Oh God, and we appreciate you. Lord, we come to give back to you what you've given to us. And I ask, oh God, that you bless the people of God. Even those that will give on Facebook. We ask in the name of Jesus, bless them in their going out, they're coming in. Lord, open the doors of employment. Make away the material things of this life. And we know, oh God, that all good and perfect gifts come from you. We ask in the name of Jesus, secure, secure, secure 
watch over them, guide them, strengthen them. But Lord, more importantly, let us have a strong and unfractured relationship with you. And Father, we thank you for the givers. Thank you for those that had not to give a desire to give. Make a way, open doors. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want to say this morning, we certainly happy to have Brother Morgan in our midst. There are times that you have young people in your church and older folks will not allow them to grow up. Am I talking about it now? This is Brother Morgan, and we are certainly happy to have him, amen, in with us this morning. Understand that uh, he and his grandpa, Brother Clark, has had a birthday. I'm going to put our hands together and say, and say happy birthday to Brother Morgan and Brother Clark. Brother Clark still calls me a young man. Thank you, Brother Clark. So we thank the Lord for that. It's a wonderful thing to have birthdays. Amen. To our assistant pastor, Elder Floyd, and to Sister Floyd. <laughs> understand, understand that they have celebrated 39 years. Celebrating that milestone in their marriage. They stand as a prime example how marriages ought to be. And if there's ever a time, we certainly need those examples. And we celebrate them again this morning. And I know one. Uh, Monday night, Evangelist Jackson will certainly make us privy of birthdays and anniversaries and such like. But I certainly wanted to do this this morning. Amen. I uh, came in and I saw Trustee Shamel. I understand that he's had a birthday too, so I'm just going to put our hands together for him. So those of you that will get on the conference call with us on Monday, Evangelist Jackson will certainly let you know all of those folks, and I've forgotten so many, but all those folks that have birthdays and anniversaries, spiritual and natural. I got a text the other day from one of our members that uh, showed me their certificate in when they got the Holy Ghost and this, that, and the other. And the blood still works. And you know who you are. And I could have cut my step. But I was certainly delighted, amen, to see that. And they're concerned about when they started. And they're concerned about their journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say praise the Lord? I cherish that. You remember when you got the Holy Ghost. You remember that when you were baptized in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I cherish 
my spiritual birthday more than I cherish my natural birthday. That's the day when life in actuality began. And we thank the Lord amen for that. To our visitors this morning, I don't have a lot of cards, just have one this morning. I think it's, I hope I'm reading that correct, Donnie DeMar. Amen. And we're certainly happy to have him. I've made the statement, and I say it with all humility, is that when you are operating under the auspices of a crisis and pandemic, there are certain changes that we have to do. And I'm asking that you will follow the direction of your pastor. Can we say praise the Lord? And since we are taking the opportunity to minister this morning to a virtual community, I want you to know that there are certain things that have to be in place and there are certain things that need to be adjusted. So I'm asking for uh, your patience and your prayers. And obviously, those that are operating the audio and video, they certainly need your help as well. And that means we cannot, we have to do certain things. So we do not look as if we do not know what we are doing. And I know this is going across the world. But we have to have some type of consistency in what we do. I believe in giving the Lord excellence. We may have a time to get there, but that is our intent. Give God the best. And we say praise the Lord. By the way, what's our word around here? Better, better, better. And that's what we want to do. And we say praise the Lord. You are here under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. God has brought you here once again. So often we think that it is our mindset to be in church. But there is an internal, internal pull upon you by the flesh. Can you hear me? And it is always in opposition to the Lord. It wants to stand independent of him, yet at the same time we proclaim from our lips many times and not coming from our heart that he is king of king and lord of law. But you're here this morning because the Lord pulled on your heart and you agreed with the voice of God to be here. My, 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 my. I'm not going to do anything against your will. And since you're here, since you're here, we want to try to push away from us distractors that God will speak to our hearts specifically and give us exactly what we need. Everyone, even those you're pity this morning to be in the sanctuary, the house of God, the Lord has showed up because there's two or three here. Everybody is not going to get the same thing. So I ask you this morning to ask your God to give you exactly what you need. And so we not leave this place with unmet needs. Leave this place, we feel encouraged. We feel uplifted. We have a mindset. Give ourselves completely to the Lord without reservation. And to understand that there is no problem, no issue, no circumstance, present or to come. God, God. Hallelujah. And that means something from us because we have to step out of our own inhibitions, how we do things and allow God just to do what you will. 
That's the thing that brings us closer to him and empowers us, enables us to go forward in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning, my brother and sister want to come to you from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6. I want to read simply two verses. Chapter 6, two verses. It's two verses I want to read this morning. Gospel of Matthew. And that is verses 33 and 34. Verses 33 and 34. It reads on this wise. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. The morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. We have read in your hearing the book of Matthew chapter 6 verses 33 and 34. We're going to ask that our assistant pastor Elder Floyd would come at this time and ask the blessings of the eternal God upon this congregant as well as our virtual assembly and ask the unction of his spirit upon the facility. Out of Florida, if you will. Thank you, Elder Floyd, for that prayer. And uh, I'm just about ready to preach in a few moments. Josh, Brother Morgan, can you give us just one more song? Just a short. 
charge some. Brother Martin, can you give us one more song? Hallelujah. Uh, my auntie's not here to sing it, so I'll go ahead and sing it this morning. Uh -oh, that's Hallelujah. Change me, O oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, O oh God. Wash me through and through. Create in me a clean, a clean heart so that I may worship you. Change me, O oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, O oh God. Wash me through and through. Lord, create in me a clean, a clean heart. She would say, so that I may worship you. I need you to change me. Come on, you know this one. From the inside out. Come on, say, change me. But it was not like you. Oh, change. Do it for me, Lord. Come on, say it with a loud voice. I need you to. Hey. Come on, say. Oh, say change. Come on, say change. Whatever you do, Lord, I need you to. I want you to come on say change oh change God we need you to hey 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 and she would say change me change me Come on, anybody want to change? What is not like you, Lord? Help me. I need you to change me. Come on, say it, church. Say, change me. Oh, say, change me. Say, change me. Say, change, change, change. Oh, say, change. Yeah, say, change. And she would say, Oh, wow. Just for change has come. You know that. Come on, say it. Me all on. Come on, say it. 
has come on hey, hey, hey. Oh, 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 oh. has come over let's do it one last time say oh wonderful Wonderful change has come for me. Come on, say, house, come over. Come on, put your hands on it right there. Say, oh, why? The soul. Can anybody relate to the change? Come on, corporate, say, oh, wonderful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. has come over for me. Can we say? Can we say amen? Let us say amen again. Shamble this thing loud enough. Can you all hear me all right? All right, all right. I believe this morning that God has something for us specifically. Many times we ask the Lord in generalities. I believe there are certain things that all of us, in regardless as to your tenure, that we ask from the Lord. And with confidence and assurance, knowing that He has the capacity to give us our petition, and knowing that He's qualified, He's capable of carrying us through. When we have this mindset, we are in actuality telling the Lord that he is in control. When I know that there is someone that has the expertise, that has the ability, has the power, has the authority, it takes away the fear and the comprehension that we have. We know someone that has a marvelous and impeccable track record. It means that there's someone that we can depend upon. We have the confidence that whatever I need that he can supply. I'm talking about someone that give accolades to him. That is that he is omnipotent, meaning that all power is in his qualified and capable hands. When I proclaim that he is omniscient, means that he knows everything that can be known. And I declare that he is omnipresent means that he is everywhere at the same time. And when I say that he is omnibenevolent means his love is limitless. 
So in fact, when I make those claims, it comes from the depths of my soul. I'm saying that God is in control. The key thing, my brothers and sisters, we must not understand this cognitively, intellectually, and from an academic standpoint. But we must have a personal, ongoing, unfractured relationship with God. This means our declaration will be challenged just because I give the Lord the glory and praise. That is, do his personality, do his character. It means that it must not be something that is just vocal, just a public expression. But in fact, there must be something innate inside of me, something that is compelling me to humble myself to the purpose and will of God and also to his power that he can do not only generally but in my personal life and the encounter and the situations that I encounter. It is not enough for the child of God that declares that they have a knowledge of God but also we must come to the place in our journey, our walk with God, our tenure with God, to allow him to govern, to direct our lives. There are times that you will feel that God is distant from you. Time that when you pray, it seems like your prayers are not going any further than the ceiling. But yet at the same time, you have made a proclamation to the world and yourself that God is in control. What does this mean to us that have acknowledged him as savior? It means obviously that he is saving us from something. What does it mean to us that proclaim that our God can do anything but fail? It means that somehow or another, our content, our mindset, our projection, our thoughts, our ideas must be alive and vibrant when we find ourselves going through our personal storms. He must be more than the celebration in the community. He must be more than the celebration that we come on Sunday morning and lift up his name. He must be operating in our homes where we recognize God is in control. Anytime God is not in control, we face two encounters. Number one, there is chaos. There's confusion and disorder. Might I say three? I know how to count, by the way. Anytime we find ourselves relying upon our own wit, our own ability, we do not see the end of the test and the trial. We do not see the end of the pain and suffering that we go through. But when we embrace the truth of our God and recognize that he has a record to show us that he's in control and that our God is of no respecter of person, then it does something for us. When we are in confusion, 
We do not know the outcome. When we are in confusion, we have a tendency of relying upon our own knowledge, our own ability, rather than relying upon God. The Bible tells us that he knows the end from the beginning. Now, Pastor Frazier, what does the Bible tell us about that? In Ephesians chapter 1, it means that our, we are predestined. It means that our victory is predetermined. It means that everything that God is going to do for us, it is already stamped and approved. The problem that we have, my brothers and sisters, is the mere fact that somehow or another, in our storms and in our difficulties, sometimes we forget who God is. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a terrible thing to forget that God is all-powerful. It's a terrible thing to forget at the time of our adversity that our God is still in control. It was Jesus in his earthly ministry that began to speak these words to his disciples. He was telling them that there would come a time that you're going to have to rely upon the word that I've spoken to you. It's not their power, it's not their abilities, but it is the word. In actuality, the Bible reminds us that his word is spirit and it's life. He began to speak to them in chapter 6 of the book of Matthew. He began to tell them about all of these things that uh, this temple life looks at. They look at how to make a living and I'm not I'm not I'm not working on you this morning in regards to make a living uh, this is something that all of us have to do but he was reminding them that we ought not to put our hope and our energies on in terms of making a living he reminded us that we ought not to put all of our thoughts in regards of the clothing that we put upon us. And not only that, but he also spoke in regards to uh, uh, the days that we uh, have because they are in the hand of God. He was so adamant about this that he spoke of a character in scripture by the name of Solomon. He said, even though Solomon, in all of his grandeur, in all of his trappings, he even looked at the lilies and looked at the flowers and said, uh, they cannot compare to them. Reminded us of the sparrow and the birds and how they do not sow, but yet at the same time that God even watches over them. And all of this, he was reminding us that our God is in control. My brother and sister, many times that we go through the storms of life, and many times that we seem like they are so paramount that we cannot go through. Can I talk just a little bit this morning? He reminds us in this particular narrative that God knows what you need and God knows all the things that you desire. And if we would come to the place in our journey, in our thinking about God, it would remind us that God has all the power and all the authority. Uh, how is it that many times that when we are up under the pressures of life, and I want to talk this morning, uh, there are times, hallelujah, we think about families, we think about marriages, we think about jobs, we think about health, but yet at the same time, the, those of us that lay claim to Christendom and say that God is our God, 
moment uh, how many times that we forget that God is in control and God is in charge it is a wonderful thing my brothers and sisters that when we look at the story we look at the difficulties of our friends and loved ones and we can tell them that your God is able to bring you through we would tell them all of the things that this marvelous God has a capacity of doing but oh when it comes to our residence when it comes to our circumstance what about you and I God still is a way maker he's a burden bearer he can do all of those things that we uh, publicly talk about but when it comes to us when trouble knocks on our door when the storms come into our life are we capable of saying that God is in control uh, can we see hallelujah to God I want you to understand this morning my brothers and sisters it is the attack of the enemy to take and detour you away from your God uh, it is the attack of the enemy to cause you to forget what God can do in your time of circumstance your time of difficulty my brothers and sisters this morning I want you to understand as we listen to the words of Jesus Christ as he begins to impart these words to his disciples would have the awesome task of changing the face of religious ossity would have the awesome task of delivering a gospel that have the power to blast men out of the quarries of sin the gospel of Jesus Christ that will save lost humanity he did not want them to be distracted by all of these things he did not want them to forget the message that he now in parts in the heart of these so, my brothers and sisters as we look at the context this morning uh, he was trying to remind them that every situation I got it so, every issue I've got it every circumstance I've got it so, not only was he imparting this particular truth to them but in fact it had to resonate within them uh, when you decide to follow God, uh, when your heart and your mind is up on God, uh, it means now these things become a reality in you. Uh, it means now that you have a mindset to serve and obey him. Uh, can we see hallelujah to God? Uh, anytime, my brothers and sisters, when we come to the place in our walk and our journey with God uh, to recognize that he is in control. Uh, I want you, hallelujah, to understand this morning uh, that God speaking through the heart of hallelujah Jesus Christ, uh, he reminded him in all of this in chapter 6, of the book of Matthew uh, he reminds them now that every test every trial every difficulty that you confront uh, hallelujah uh, that God has already gone before you uh, God has already tested the waters uh, God has already made a way uh, sometimes my brothers and sisters uh, when we forget who God is uh, when we forget the awesome power of God uh, we forget the awesome authority of God uh, hallelujah then then uh, we are left to our own devices uh, but when we understand that God is in control uh, we're not afraid of what the enemy might do uh, we're not afraid hallelujah uh, of what men may say uh, but when God is in control uh, it reminds us us, uh, that we can overcome uh, we can go through uh, we can stand the test and the trial uh, when God is in control uh, can we see hallelujah can we see hallelujah uh, hallelujah to God uh, when God is in control hallelujah to God 
It means now, now, now. We have come to the place in our journey, our walk with God, that when trouble come, we cast our cares upon him. Can we see hallelujah to God? It means now we do not waver. We do not falter. When God is in control, when the storms of life knock on our door, when the cloud, dark cloud shows up, we are reminded that our confidence, our assurance is in God Almighty. Can we say praise the Lord? My brother and sister, hallelujah. Ha <laughs> when we understand that God is in control we know now hallelujah that everything that we need God can supply we understand by the power and authority of God that we can go through any test and any trial we understand hallelujah that God 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 brings about our confidence our assurance in God so can we see hallelujah Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this morning. Hallelujah, when God is in control. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. God is going to take care of all of your tomorrows. You don't have to worry how things are going to end up. Because God has already taken care of it. So many times, my brothers and sisters, the enemy tries to destroy you to take you away huh, from the things that God desires for you to do huh. you cannot serve God huh, with all of your heart soul mind and strength huh, when you are afraid to walk before God huh. you cannot obey God with all of your hearts huh, when you fail to understand that God is in control huh. can we see hallelujah huh. when God is in control huh, it it changes my outlook can we see hallelujah when God is in control good God from Zion I can speak my God to my situation can we see hallelujah I can speak to my storm I can speak to my heart hallelujah God when God is in control I'm here to tell somebody when your God is in control you don't have to worry about what tomorrow is going to bring you don't have to worry about what folks are going to do but oh when God is in control hallelujah may seem like you can't get through it may seem like that you're overwhelmed but when God is in control everything is going to come out all right everything that your battle is going to make a difference when God is in control hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to raise your hand right now and say, Lord, come too far from where I started from. Lord, you've been the upper lift of my head. Lord, you've been my joy. Lord, you've been my peace of mind. When I didn't know what to do, Lord, you stood by me, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all the things that you've done. Put your hand together and give God some praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are times, my brothers and sisters, I'm trying to quit here. There are times that we forget who God is. Can we say hallelujah? There are times, hallelujah, that we feel like we're all burdened, but your God and my Lord, He's able to bring you through. He's able to fight your battle. He's able to stand by you. 
when the going get rough uh, hallelujah to God when you make up your mind uh, to serve God when you make up your mind uh, to hold on to God's unchanging hand uh, God will bring you out uh, God will deliver you uh, God will raise you up uh, God will fight your battle hallelujah 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 my god my god my god so when we recognize that god is in control my god my god and there are times that you have to tell yourself hallelujah lord you're in control my god my god my god what situation are you confronting today that god cannot handle my god my god hallelujah Hallelujah. Right, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I may not get it this morning like I feel it. But don't you ever forget that your God is in control. My, my, my. When my body is wracked with pain, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When pain is so severe, I want you to know that your God is in control. My God, my God. And life doesn't go the way that you thought it should. God is yet in control. And since our God is in control, I want you to hear me today. We still worship and praise and magnify God. Am I talking loud enough? Lord, I can't figure it out. I can't work it out. All of these things, but Lord, I know that you're in control. And when you are in control, I'm to do those things that you have ordered me to do. My God, my God still praying, still walking before the Lord, still honoring him, and still glorifying the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And believing what the scripture has declared. Who's in control of your life this morning? Is it God? Then you'll continue to march on with the Lord. You still hold your head up in the face of adversity. You still proclaim that he's my strength, he's my joy. You may not feel like running through troops and looking over walls, but yet he's still your savior. He's still your coming king. He's still the one that you rejoice about. This means he's in control. He'll do what you can't do. Straighten out the rough parts of your life. When you don't see an end at the end of the tunnel, he'll show you the possibility. When you're overwhelmed, Sometime with spouse and families and children, work and all these things and sicknesses and to come by and let you know I'm in control. I'm in control. Someone told me that I'm ready to quit right now, but someone told me the other day, a friend of mine, his wife passed the other day. I didn't say too much to the wife, but I felt the pain in my heart. Yet at the same time, God is in control. And loved ones and friends make the transition. God is still in control. I still stand firm, confident on the unadulterated word of God. 
In my tears and my sadness, I still have a mind to praise God. I still honor him because I know that he's in control. Life is better with him than without him. He's in control. It dries my tears. It gives me hope. It tells me to keep on walking with him. Keep on standing. One day I'm going to take you with me. Hallelujah. Today is a call of discipleship. If you know not the Lord in the pardon of your sin, he can change your life. If you have not been formally introduced to him, now is the time. If you have not been a recipient of water baptism in his name and being filled with the person power of the Holy Spirit, now is your time. Now is your time. If you've drifted away, now is the time to consider coming back to him. If you want more of him, now is the time. Hallelujah. There's no one that can give you peace like he can. There's no one that can come your life like he can. Give you meaning. Give you a start over. Like Jesus. If you're here today under the sound of our voice, this is your opportunity to call. Come. I've said these words for many, many years. Calm. Few have decided. But I want you to know that the Lord will do you good. Our final call, our final call, our final call, my, 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 my. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. We can sing a little bit song when we get ready to dismiss. Join. All that's good, perfect, comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Let's stand. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good, good comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Oh. For all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Come on, this way. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good, perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment hope for all i do jesus 
Brother and sister, hold on to God. Encourage your brothers and sisters. Don't let a day go by that you not celebrate your relationship with Him. This is a time of trial, test to the church itself. I'm talking about it. Let's continue to pray. Make your home the center. I'm talking about it. Encourage someone. Ask the Lord to inspire. So to inspire. Ask the Lord to encourage you in this time. Let us not forget the Lord. I'm not talking about enough. Let us not forget. Him. Let us bow our heads. Once again, oh God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. When there's nothing else that we can do, Lord, we magnify your name. You have brought us, oh God, from a mighty long way. This time of crises and pandemic. In this country alone, over 200,000 folks have died. But you kept us in the land of the living. Oh God, we thank you. You watched over our spouse, our children, our sons and our daughters. Lord, you allowed us to praise and magnify your name. Oh God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Let us not forget you. Let us draw, oh God, close to you. Let us, oh God, I pray, to remember those that are less fortunate than we. Our neighbors, our co-workers, those, oh God, in the nursing homes, that many times they feel all alone. Oh God, those that are working there, protect and watch over. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, keep us in the hollow of your hand. Lord, watch over us when we have those, those panic attacks. Just come by and uplift our heads and encourage us. Father, you are in control. Our destiny is in your hands. And as we leave this place of sanctuary and worship, Lord, go with us. And when this pandemic is over, this virus is over, help us to come out better than what we went in. And Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. As we leave this place this day, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Deacon Johnson, will you take opportunity to usher the folks out? Those of you that have offerings, they have a container for you, and we ask that you follow social distancing. Deacon Johnson. <laughs> 